This video covers period four of the AP US History exam from 1800 to 1848. Let's call this one the trials of growing up. The United States develops the world's first modern mass democracy and celebrated a new national culture while Americans sought to define the nation's democratic ideals and to reform its institutions to match them. This lands us on the first key concept of this era, the theme of growth. As the United States started to grow into itself, it made several moves to grow both philosophically and physically. Let's call this first stage of growth the age of nationalism. Let's talk about a few things that are necessary to understand about this age. First, we have the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. In modern terms, we can think of this as the first massive government-sponsored real estate deal. Jefferson and Napoleon came to terms, which gave Napoleon much needed capital to fight his wars and a very low sticker price for Jefferson. With a stroke of a pen, America was twice the size and was ready for a massive expansion effort. Not all aspects of this era were totally friendly. The British were back and the United States needed to mark its place as a nation that was not to be messed with. Whipped up with nationalist sentiment, the United States entered the War of 1812. U.S. nationalism also displayed itself in the development and exercise of the philosophy of Manifest Destiny. You always hear about this notion of sea to shining sea, and that hard work will pay off with a good and plentiful life. Following the acquisition of the Louisiana Purchase and the winning of the War of 1812, Americans developed this idea, even if it was only an idea that their God-given right was to inhabit the continent from coast to coast. Hence, the massive American push for westward expansion in the 1840s. For some detail, we could look to the initial exploration by Lewis and Clark the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, a subtle warning against European expansion in the Western Hemisphere, and the Mexican-American War in the 1840s, which would continue the geographic growth of the United States in the Southwest and California. This brings us to the second key concept, developing an American identity. Developments in technology, agriculture, and commerce precipitated profound changes in U.S. settlement patterns, regional identities, gender and family relations, political power, and distribution of consumer goods. Let's call this the age of reform. There are many aspects of American society that contributed to the developing mosaic of its identity. The age of reform showed that the fabric of the new nation was continually evolving as it grew into the first decades of the 19th century. Things were about to change. The Second Great Awakening showed that Americans had not lost their staunch religious leanings. This religious revival revealed the expanding nature of how people in different parts of the nation thought differently about the role of religion in their portion of American society. The abolition movement gained speed as Americans moved into a new century. Not only did this show a plain divide between Americans, but as the U.S. economy expanded, so did slavery and the now public resistance to its continued use. The temperance movement was sparked by Americans who felt that corruption and vice were ruining the wholesome fabric of their society. With a variety of aims in mind, this movement would eventually influence local, state, and national policies regarding what was believed to be the dark side of American life. To round out this age of reform, we must remember that with its rapid expansion, America was forced to take a real introspective look at itself, come to terms with necessary changes that would shape the path of the nation for decades to come. Finally, we come to key concept number three, becoming a lone ranger in the larger world. U.S. interest in increasing foreign trade, expanding its national borders, and isolating itself from European conflicts shaped the nation's foreign policy and spurred government and private initiatives. In order to deal with a raft of issues at home, the United States became kind of a lone ranger in its efforts to shore things up within its own borders. A perfect example of this would be what we call the Age of Jackson. Andrew Jackson is one of the most controversial characters in American history, whose legacy has both been celebrated and reviled. When considering necessary information, it's okay to think about his good and not so good sides. As a reflection of where America was headed, we can look to Jackson's championing of the common and self-made man. Despite his belief in this sense of individualism, his thought about personal and national advancement did not apply to all people living in America. He did draw a color line when developing his ideas surrounding democracy and equality. In his effort to make wide-spanning political reform, Jackson worked to eliminate property and religious qualifications for voting and office holding, promoted a rotation in office, and a massive extension of the spoils system. Just think, over 900 people lost their government jobs, only to be replaced by those that Jackson made political promises to during the presidential election. As president, Jackson also dealt with economic strife. He vetoed the renewal of the Second National Bank, led America into the Panic of 1837, and fought Congress on issues involving tariffs. With all of this, do not forget, Jackson spent a great deal of political and military energy on what became the horrifying stories of Indian removal and the continued extension of slavery in the South and the West. 
All of this leads us to the close of this conversation, which lies in the further sectionalizing of America, the development of regional identities that showed even more that this Lone Ranger mentality would help different geographic areas of the nation walk to their own beat. Think about it. The industrial north, the plantation and agricultural south, the wild and untamed west. Make sure to check out the documents associated with this portion of the study guide, including Thomas Jefferson's opposition to the Federalists in 1810, Lydia Maria Child on women's rights in 1843, the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, Jefferson on British aggression in 1815, a plea to defend the Alamo in 1836, and Andrew Jackson to the Cherokee tribe in 1835. On to our fourth skills focus, the long essay. In the long essay question, you'll have a choice of two questions and 35 minutes to complete your answer. The long essay is worth 15% of your exam score. This essay requires you to bring together your historical thinking skills to craft an effective historical argument that analyzes continuity and change over time. You'll be given a historical interpretation and asked to support, modify, or refute by making a solid argument backed by historical evidence and reasoning. It's probably just simpler to give examples. Our first example is this. Some historians have argued that the American Revolution was not revolutionary in nature. Support, modify, or refute this interpretation, providing specific evidence to justify your answer. Here's another example. Some historians have argued that the New Deal was ultimately conservative in nature. Support, modify, or refute this interpretation, providing specific evidence to justify your answer. We'll go through a couple of steps to get this one done. Step one, pick the question that you feel you can answer the best. Step two, come up with a strong thesis statement that supports, modifies, or refutes that statement. Step three, outline the facts, events, and theories that support your thesis. Step number four, get writing. And remember, there is no right answer, just a well-crafted historical argument. Here are some examples of good thesis statements. Andrew Jackson was a complex individual whose political leanings were both celebrated and reviled at different points in American history. Slavery was an issue that divided the United States socially, politically, and geographically. Here are a couple examples of incomplete thesis statements. Andrew Jackson was a good and bad president, and he liked to ride horses. Some people believed in slavery and some didn't. Be specific. Stay rooted in the evidence you know. Ensure that your thesis remains the central ribbon that moves through the entire essay. We've posted examples of essays that have scored well and some that have scored not so well on our AP guide. Check them out and see if the scores you'd give them are in line with those given by actual AP graders.